this is Quinn, that's Nazi iPhone Guy, and this is a tutorial on how to fix the ever so frustrating iTunes 1013 error. Now don't be alarmed when you see this Mac OS X desktop. I'm going to be doing a Windows tutorial as well. It's actually still in this video. I've laced the two together, and all you need to do is click the annotation in the top left hand corner to jump to the Windows section of this video. Now, before we get into the Mac section and before I kind of explain to you how we're going to do this, I want to give you a little bit of a background and a little bit of a precursor uh, for those of you that may be wondering exactly what we're going to be doing. Now, first things first, if you are unlocked and not factory unlocked, but software unlocked, be it via Ultra Snow, what have you, this will update your baseband, thusly relocking your device. So if you are unlocked, you're not going to want to do what I'm going to do in this video. And uh, there are other ways to update and to get out of this 1013 error without updating your baseband. Granted, they're extremely more complex than this system, so this is why uh, this won't work for you. So just take note to that if you are uh, if you're on an unlocked device. Now, what we're going to be doing is changing the host files in our computer. 99.9% .9 of the time when you get the iTunes 1013 error, it's because you are jailbroken, you have been jailbroken, or you've plugged a jailbroken device into your computer. When you plug a jailbroken device into your computer, it adds a line to your system's host files. Now, what this does is it is a gs.apple.com file, and now it's put there to sign with Saric or Cydia or Jay Freeman, you know, Jay Freeman, who's Cydia's owners, uh, server rather than Apple's name servers. Now, iTunes is actually smart enough to check with that host file and it times out, thusly kicking your device back into recovery, which is why you get that 1013 error. So, what we're going to be doing is omitting Saric's name server line. So, iTunes will go through Apple's activation servers, thusly signing what we need to be signed. So, if that didn't make sense, don't worry. That was the difficult part. Now, we're getting into the easy part where we actually do it. So, if you are on Mac OS X, you're going to need to click the Finder button. When you get to your Finder, you're going to find this window. You're going to hold Shift Command G, and this folder will pop up. Now you're going to type backslash private backslash etc backslash, just like that. When you press OK or Go rather, you're going to be in this folder. Now you're going to want to go down to the host folder. Not now, not host equiv, not host on umbrella, just hosts. Okay, you may not even have half of these. This is from Tiny Umbrella, which is totally, you know, unrelated to this subject. But so we're going to find the host file. Okay. Now by default, we can open it, but we can't save it. We can't do anything to it because it's locked by the system. We don't have permission. Rather than editing all the other permission files in our system, we're just going to drag this host file onto our desktop so we can edit it there. Now that it's on our desktop, we're going to double click this and we're going to open it. Now there those little name servers are. I've got two of them. You may have three. You may have one. You may have four. This is what we need to do. Now some people in some videos will tell you to delete those altogether. I don't actually recommend that. What you can do is put a pound sign in front of them and this pound sign will make them quote unquote comments so they don't actually count in the host file. So that's what I do. I put a pounder, if you're in the UK, a hash sign in front of those. And once you have that hash in front, you're good to go. That doesn't count. That's omitted from your host file. So now we're going to save that. And it's going to say the file host is unlocked. We're going to want to overwrite it. Okay. We're going to quit text edit. And now we're going to drag this host file back into this folder. Now it's going to say this can't be moved because it's a locked folder. Now we have to authenticate this. You may not have to, and if you don't, that's no big deal. But uh, most people will have to authenticate it. You're going to want to replace the file. Not merge, not copy. You're going to want to replace it. And then you're going to need to type your admin password. Once you've done so, you're good to go. Now the best fix for this, you still may experience issues. So what I would do is go to your Apple menu and restart your computer. And then once you've restarted, everything should work fine. Go through your restore and you should not experience any issues whatsoever and you'll be set up with a new iDevice. So that's it. If for whatever reason, and this is a very rare occurrence, but if for whatever reason you're, you don't get the 1013 error, but you're like 70% of the way done through the restore, you can see the progress bar and the progress bar just stops. Be it for 10 minutes, two hours, four weeks, it just stops. What you're going to want to do is download Black Rain. Now, I know Black Rain is a jailbreaking utility. It's an old one by that. But what Black Rain does is before it actually jailbreaks, it throws your device in and or out of recovery slash DFU mode. So 
Um, when you're in that state in iTunes and it's just stuck on both the computer and the phone, download Black Rain, run Black Rain. It's not actually going to jailbreak you, but just run Black Rain and it'll kick you out of recovery mode and then you'll be good to go. So that shouldn't be an issue for most people, but if it is, give Black Rain a shot. Now, for those of you that are on Windows, uh, it's a very similar and it's not very tough at all. What you need to do is go into the start menu. Now, I'm using Windows 7. If you're using Windows uh, XP and or Vista, the same holds true. Uh, Vista is the exact same as 7 and XP is a little bit different. So uh, you're going to go into all programs. Then you're going to go into accessories and you're going to go to notepad. Now, if I can find it, there we go. You're gonna to go to Notepad. If you're on XP, just open it. If you're on Vista or 7, you need to right click it and run as administrator, okay? Once you're running this as administrator, you're good to go. Now we need to actually find the host file. So what we're gonna to do to locate that is go to Windows, Computer. You're gonna open your C drive. Then you're gonna to go to Users, excuse me, you're gonna to go to Windows. And then you are going to go to System32. Uh, there it is right there. You're going to open System32 and you're going to go to Drivers. So you're going to go C Drive, Windows, System32, Drivers, and then Open Etc. Once you open Etc, you will find the host file and uh, you can just drag that into Notepad to save that. So here it is. And again, there are those naughty little files. Now, rather than in what we did with OS X, uh, you can hash these out if you want, but I found that it doesn't very often work, especially on Windows 7. So if you're on Windows 7, just delete these altogether. You got those deleted. You're gonna resave your file. Once you've saved it, give it a close, reboot your computer, and then you'll be good to go. You won't experience any issues and you should, without flaw, be able to get out of that state without that 1013 error. So that's it. That's, that's me. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and as always, stay snazzy. Have a good one, folks.